Shut up and sit down. Oh, hello and welcome to a North Wales side by side video. I'm going to tell you tonight a story about what happened to me last night on a particular country lane which I'm heading back to now to talk you through the series of events that happened to me. I was on this lane and if you remember very early on into the ownership of this GR Sport I made a video on this lane of me coming down it reasonably quick I'm being mightily impressed by the handling and the lights and just the car in general I know that's what I'd come up here to do last night have a blast down what is an old motoring news rally stage. So, I'm bombing down here last night. A lot quicker than I'm going now. Because I got a funny feeling they might be here again tonight or I might be here a little bit earlier than they're planning to come up. I've come down the lane, this thing doesn't make a noise, so they're not going to know I'm coming, all they're going to see is headlights. I get to this part of the lane and I'm dropping down and here we've got a gateway just here where that open gate is they were parked there I didn't see them until I'd gone past them so I've carried on going down the lane I spot in my mirror their headlights going on so I've carried on going I'm not breaking any speed limits or anything so I'm just minding my own business enjoying the lane having a bit of fun decided to tag on to me or anything so I just put it out of my mind I'm aware they're behind me and they're following me but from what I could make out they were only in some of that like a Peugeot estate car or something like that or an Astra I wasn't sure at the time I know it wasn't a traffic car that was hidden in the gateway. So I've just carried on driving down the lane. They're catching me up see in the mirror, I can see the lights behind me, they're catching me up. Oh, maybe they've had a call. But I doubt that very, very little. So I get to this point in the lane and I think, I'm just going to pull over. I'm just going to park up and see what's going on. I'm, I'm more curious now. I'm thinking, I've done nothing wrong. 
Let me just park up. And sit here. So they pull up alongside me. Let me now reenact the entire conversation that went on between me and two very young police constables. You're going to watch me play some really bad acting now whilst I try and explain a traffic stop I was involved in last night. And I'm actually on the lane that I got stopped on. And I've tried to play my part and two police officers, which is why you'll see me getting in and out of the car. So they're not doppelgangers of me, the police officers. It's me. So I don't think there's a couple of police officers that look like me out in the wild. Because that would be a scary, scary thought. Anyhow, watch my very bad acting. Because it is abysmal. And just watch what happened. Because it's... When I look back at it now, it's quite a comical stop and lots and lots of procedures on the police's part have not been followed correctly and it was an absolute farce. Just enjoy the video because it is just one of them silly scenarios that I suppose pans out day in day out somewhere in the country. Good evening, sir. Do you know why we've stopped you? No, officer. I don't know why you've stopped me. Does this vehicle belong to you, sir? Um, no. This vehicle does not belong to me. Do you have the keys for this vehicle, sir? No, I'm sorry. I've got no keys for the vehicle. This is the point where I've now got one police officer standing in front of the car. Police car at the side of me. This officer who's been talking to me gets in his car, starts making a radio call. He's only asked me three questions. Do I know why they've stopped me? No. Is this my vehicle? No. Do I have the keys for the vehicle? No. Every one of them questions has been answered correctly. Haven't got a clue why you stopped me. Technically, I'm only the registered keeper. Until I make the last payment for the car next January, the car still belongs to Toyota Finance. And three, the car doesn't have any keys. It has a smart key fob. So I've not answered any of his questions incorrectly. Everything has been answered correctly as he's asked me the questions. Now he comes back to the car. Um, sir, I will have to ask you to turn the, power, the vehicle off, please. So I turn the car off. He then asks me, will you please get out of the vehicle and come and sit in the back of my police car? No, I'm not getting out of this vehicle, sir. 
I will wait in my vehicle until we sort this issue out. I lock my door, I crack my window up so there's only a little gap. So I'll wait with one police officer stood in front of the car, one stood at the side of the car and I've got, I can't go anywhere, can't go back because I can't get around the police car if I wanted to go back. I'm not going to run an, another human being over and I've got nothing to run from. 20 minutes later an armed response vehicle turns up. BMW X5. He's called for backup. Two officers get out of the armed response vehicle and they go to talk to the officer who's been talking to me through the window. The other officer has stayed in front of the car but I don't know why he's done that because I've got an X5 parked across the front of the car. Can't go anywhere. One of the armed response officers comes over to the car now. So I crack the window. Do you know why you've been stopped? And uh, no, I wasn't told why I was stopped. Can you answer two questions for me, sir? I believe you don't own this vehicle. I'm also led to believe you don't have any keys for this vehicle. Can you expand on them two questions for me, please? Yes, I did tell the officer I don't own the vehicle. And yes, I did tell him I've got no keys for the vehicle. So I explained to him now that I am the registered keeper of the vehicle and until I make the last payment I'm not legally the owner of the vehicle and I said when it comes to keys this vehicle is a smart entry vehicle that only requires me to touch the door and then to start it foot the brake push the power button but you told my colleague you didn't own the car and you had no keys. That's correct. I did tell him I didn't own the vehicle and I've just explained to you that I'm the registered keeper but not the owner of the vehicle until I make the last payment. And yes, I did tell him I had no keys for the vehicle, which I'm still telling you I don't have any keys for the vehicle. I have a smart fob in my pocket for gaining entry to the car and starting the car. I also haven't been told why I've been stopped. I was just asked the questions he asked me and then he's called you up here. You explain to me why I've been stopped and why as he called armed response out to deal with something that could have been sorted out a long time ago. The reason why the officers are up here at the moment is we've had reports of cars driving up and down this lane at a great deal of speed. He also went on to explain to me he believed this vehicle was stolen with you telling him you didn't own the car and you had no keys for it. I'm now under the under the influence that you, one, are the registered keeper, and two, you have the smart key fob for the vehicle. That's correct. Yes, officer. I am the registered keeper, and I do have the smart key fob for the car. And I'm now assuming your colleague thought I'd stolen the car? Is that why he's called you here? 
and he's also assumed I'm using this road as a racetrack. That's the feeling I'm getting at the moment. Can I help you any more than that? Am I free to go? Well, under the circumstances, sir, I'm happy this car is in your legal possession. You're the registered keeper. You have the keys, or the smart key fob as you keep calling it. And yes, I'm happy for you to leave the scene. Oh, thank you very much. And enjoy the rest of your shift. Have a good evening. Our response officer now removes his car out of the way and lets me go. The only reason why that the entire scenario panned out was because I answered the questions that he asked me. Did I know why I'd been stopped? No idea. I did find out in the conversation there'd been reports of cars driving up and down this lane quickly and using it as a racetrack can understand that I'm in a relatively fast really well handling GR Yaris Sport so it looks smart maybe they thought I was one of the people razzing up and down the lane secondly he asked me was I the owner of the car? I technically didn't tell him any lies. I said no, I wasn't. He didn't. He didn't elaborate any further on the question. If he had, I would have explained to him. Registered keeper. But he never went any further than that. He's now made an assumption, which is why he asked me if I'd got the keys for the car, which is why I said to him, no. Because I don't have any keys for the car, I've got a smart key fob, which I had to explain to the traffic officer. He conducted the stop, the traffic officer, a lot better than the young constable. But even though now we've got four police officers dealing with me, the two original who stopped me, two traffic officers, arm response officers, whatever. None of them asked me who I was or any identification. They let me go. I find that a bit weird, but I'm not bothered. It was uh, half an hour of my time, which I wasn't bothered about because it was late at night. And it tied to two police cars and four officers up for something that was an absolute and utter waste of time. To hide two police officers in the middle of nowhere when nobody's going to cause any harm. And then for them two police officers not to be able to handle what was going on because they wrongly assume I'd stolen the car. To bring him back up just to get to the bottom of the story. Um, ah, yeah. That's what happened. I haven't got four police officers here tonight, which is why I kept getting in and out of the car. So, hey, that's the story. That's how I got stopped. That's what happened. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, so there's anybody watching me tonight getting in and out of the car, talking to an empty car, and talking to nobody outside, they must be thinking, He's, he's lost the plot, he's going crazy. Padded cell and a jacket and his arms tied round his back is what this guy needs. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Thumbs up if you've enjoyed the little story about what happened to me. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.